With us now is Mario Kyoto. Mario, welcome to the show. How are you? I'm great and happy to be here. So you are an ex extraordinary sculptor. Um, and I wanted to talk to you because I told you on the phone, I have a little bit of an art background, but you have a very interesting journey about how you became the man that you are today. Take us back to how you grew up. I, I grew up in a very humble uh, family. My mom was an immigrant from Italy. My father was first generation here. Um, we didn't have much in the early days and I had this insatiable desire to create things. So I would take mud, I would color on the walls, I would do all kinds of crazy things. And instead of my parents fighting me on it, they encouraged me. Wow. Um, and again, they didn't have much money, um, but they did their best for me. I used to color on bags, things like that. Um, but then much later, when I was about 11 years old, Dr. Marcus Foster discovered me. He was the first African-American superintendent of Oakland, California, and put me in an experiment. Okay. And that exper experiment was for creative kids who showed an aptitude but were falling apart in their regular school. Okay. And that was my training in art. I never went to college for art, uh, but that was, that was very key early on. What was the first piece that was either commissioned or that somebody paid you for? When did you become a professional artist? Actually, I was 14 years old and a school student's mom hired me to create this wild tree sculpture for her spa. And that's the first time I actually got paid to do, uh, to do artwork. <laughs> How did that feel? Were you like elated beyond control elated? Well, the funny, I was not only elated, but it, it, what it did more than anything is allowed me to want to do more art okay. and not so much for the money, but to buy more supplies. You know, and isn't that usually the case of an artist is that, you know, you, you sell something, but then maybe you want to try clay or then maybe you want to try this or, you know, you invest, I guess, in your practice. Yes. Yeah, and, and the clay was the opening point when I went to the Marcus Foster School that was called the Renaissance School. And they, for a few weeks in the beginning, just let me sit there with clay and create anything I want and then approached my schooling. And I loved school then and excelled oh, wow. as opposed to being at the bottom of the class. So it just kind of like inspired you to do your best. Absolutely. And they would approach it with, well, guess what? If you like sculpture so much, Michelangelo used to be really into ge geometry and mathematics. So I had to be into geometry and mathematics. And it all began to make sense to me. Can you, we're going to talk in particular about one amazing sculpture that you have, but can you give me like your top three projects? Because you're also known for creatures, you're known for all kinds of things. Right, right. Well, once upon a time, you could say a maverick in the Halloween and creature world, okay. where there's, I, we've learned that there's over 17,000 designs that I created in that world. Wow. And that was, that was an amazing time. But then I felt I needed to move on. And there were other things that I had done in the entertainment industry not just the movie industry, but we did a tremendous amount of work in the theming art for Las Vegas. But what really turned my corner of something that was always passionate for me was history and art being combined to tell people's stories. And when 9-11 hit, mm. you know, the whole country was mortified. And wa I wanted to do something. And I remember there was like a little bit of separating between people during those days, or a lot of separating of cultures. And I thought people need to see that we're more alike than not alike. And that's when I came up with the concept behind the Remember Them monument. And 13 years that, it took you, right? 13 years from 13 concept, years. Right. Right. And people initially thought, oh, nice idea, but that's a little too airy fairy. And if you really want to find out about people, 
announce you're going to do a monument that says all people are the same, all people are equal. And it brought out the best of the world and in some cases not so good parts of the world. Were you able to clean up the graffiti? Like, like things happen to your art, you know, and right. people desecrated it and they did mean things to it. Were you, how did you fix that? How did you fix what somebody had, you know, tried to tarnish? Well, there's actually a great side to the story. I, of course, was so disappointed that it was tagged and the things that they said. In the middle of the night, and I'm still trying to find out who it was, a person or it had to have been a group of people went in the middle of the night and cleaned everything up. That's a huge major undertaking. And, and it was done in a short period of time, so it had to be several people. And that just you know, touched my heart like you wouldn't believe. And I got so much Facebook and social media of how people were saying they, you know, it reinforced their belief in humanity and it stood for what the monument stood for. It's about nurturing equality. That is a phrase that just rings true to my heart every day of my life, you know, and you've done it so beautifully. Uh, you were talking about Maya Angelou and a few of the people that, you know, were kind of interested, you know, the first people that came to talk about it. Yes, Maya Angelou was the very first piece of person in the outside world to view at the original models. And I'll never forget when she walked in, I was about to say, oh, this is my model. And she said, silence, no words are necessary. And of course, I didn't know what to do. I almost soiled myself. Wow. And then that just she gave me took chills, it actually. Oh, chills. I. I was I was in tears when she, when she finally did start to talk. She said, "It's all in the work. Just do it." Because I asked her, "What what do I do here? This is a concept that people go. It's a nice idea, but she said, just do it. The right people are came will come within thirty days." Kaiser Permanente came and took a view and said, we want to sponsor this. This is too good to be true. And I, and her words rang clear, but I also spent a lot of time with Ruby Bridges. Um, Ruby Bridges was the African American girl in the Norman Rockwell painting who yes. actually lived being the only African American in an all white school in New Orleans. And to hear those stories and perseverance and keep going and loneliness and isolation, it, it, it really fueled me to do what I needed to do. And of course I wanted to do like 300 people on this monument, but I wanted to make clear, this is a starting point okay. to recognize normal people, hmm. just everyday people who did extraordinary things. And they all had faults, they all had problems. And I think that's kind of important also. The humanity of it. The yes, that we're, it. yes. Some people get a little too judgmental, but we need to learn from the good side of what they did in spite of the cultures they lived in. And so that we can do better in our culture. You became a phenomenal sculptor um, and you're not done yet, right? I always feel like, you know, yeah. something else amazing is gonna be coming forth from you. Um, but you told me something earlier today too, is that you're, you have a, a rare like color blindness about you, right? You only see, what is it, 10% of color? That's what was measured. I have deformed cones in my eyes. Okay. And I, I of course thought everything was normal growing up. I had no idea I was missing color. And in school, in elementary school in particular, they thought, well, this kid is mentally challenged. He can't even say what color that is. And it was an awful time in my life. But somehow I got through that, especially with Marcus Foster. But it wasn't until I was in my 20s that we discovered of the deformed cones. And then it was not until I was 48 years old, which was 10, 11 years ago, that I actually got to see color for the first time, with, wow. which was a special experimental glasses that came from Stanford University. And Thank I'll you. never wow. forget the first time. I, I was in tears. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. And so Mario, now that you can see color, do you have a favorite? 
Well, I can only see color with those glasses, so I okay. don't carry these big ginormous things around me. <laughs> and when you say favorite, I just remember seeing the hillside um, that absolutely blew me away. That I, I, I'll never forget what the sky looked like. And the funny thing that I really remember was looking at freeway signs and had no idea that they were the color, whatever it was. Oh, and yeah. how bright that was. Oh. But the problem is it's not practical to wear those. No. Um, but, it, you know, I'll, I'll go back to them once in a while. I would say, you know, see, like, yeah, once every once in a while or, you know, if you're traveling something or, you know. But your work is a beauty to behold. And is there one accolade in particular that you're um, particularly proud of? Yes. Okay. And what is believe that? Believe it or not, it was this. Okay. The day before unveiling the Remember Them monument, um, I was standing there by myself, and it was like 6 o'clock in the morning, and there was a homeless man standing in front of the monument. And he didn't know who I was, and he turned to me. He said, when I look at these champions, it makes me want to try. And I remember I broke down and I said, thank you. I didn't tell him who I was. And that, the way he said it, that's what I wanted this monument to do. And that was the biggest moment for me. That's a great story. You know, and sometimes when I'm doing what I do and I'm talking to people just like we're sharing right now, it's always sometimes that question that just like comes right forth, right? An unplanned question. And that's such a beautiful response. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Thank I look, you. I look forward to, if you will do me the honor someday, of going to get like a brick of clay, and I would love to play in the clay with you sometime. So, I Mario, would thank love you. to have you here. Would you do that? I would love that. I would oh, so love I, that. You, you would love the studios and what goes on here. You would. I'm looking would forward to, to it. Happy journeys thank to you so always. Much. Okay, be well. Thanks, Mario. Take thank care. You. Be well. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.